Hello, Year 7. So before you start doing your narrative writing, please make sure you copy and paste the link below and complete your retrieval quiz. Off you go. Hello, Year 7. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to have a little look at the two statements that are on the left-hand side. And I would like you to consider... Um, any inferences from those particular statements. So it's like a process that you're going to go through to get to a particular conclusion. So I want you to think about this, about how you've got to get across from one side of the island to the other side of the island without touching the lava. OK, so I want you to think he threw his crisp leather briefcase at the wall. Now, I want you to bring to bring together that process of arriving at that particular conclusion, what's happened to it previously. Then I'd also like you to look at the second statement that says, she stared blankly at the child holding her broken necklace. So what happened prior to this, before um, we get to this particular statement, um, so we can follow that inference process. On the next slide, you've got a clear um, board, so you can fill that in. Um, you can either print it off or you can type it in if you're working on a computer. Uh, you've got about five minutes, off you go. Okay, well done. So now I want you to look at are the following paragraphs that are going to be on the next few slides. You're going to have 30 seconds as to whether the example has a metaphor to describe the setting or the character. Now, read them carefully as there may be more than one. Okay, so take your time, read through them, off you go. OK, so let's read through this together and then we'll share some ideas. So as the children invade the park, bags and coats are tossed aside like limp corpses. I watch on as they march through the grasslands. So here we've got this kind of extended metaphor of war. It's almost shown as like the children are attacking the park at this point in time. When we're looking at um, these limp corpses, it's almost like it's being careless that they don't care about anyone else at all. And the fact that we've got this march through the grassland, it's almost like they're forceful and relentless in what they are doing. Have a read through the next paragraph and then we're going to share some ideas after that. OK, so let's have a little look through this one. So it says the ocean washes over the sand as I lay back in serenity. An epidemic of joy fills the horizon as children splash and swim in the blistering heat and bandaged in towels. So we can see how this, we've got darkness versus light here. We can see how we've got this light of serenity and joy. but We've also got this darkness of this epidemic, this blistering and bandaged. So again, it's kind of showing how um, the good overcomes the bad at this point in time as well. OK, so let's read through this one. I remember us sitting together, our hands swimming the distance between us with hearts flooded with an affection. Your eyes are awash with tears. So we can see this extended metaphor of the ocean. Maybe if there's been some depth to their relationship and how it's coming together at this point in time. So I'd like you to look at these extended metaphors, which are on the right hand side of the slide. And I would like you to build a list in the same semantic field. So remember the same category. Um, so I want you to spend one minute on each one. So one minute on war, one minute on light versus dark, one minute on tree, one minute on oceans, one minute on books. I want you to just jot down around five for each semantic field. Um, you've got about three minutes. If you've got a thesaurus, that's always really helpful as well. I can go online and use your thesaurus then. OK, use your time really well. Off you go. OK, so an ideal way of putting an extended metaphor into your narrative writing is by using um, light versus darkness. Um, I think we've already done this previously when we've looked at a hero's journey um, and we can see how what's happened previously to a particular character or at the end um, which really shows like a clear view because remember we've got to have that pivotal point in our narrative. 
Um, I also would like you to think about the um, images that you looked at as well. You had four images and you always thought about what happened previous or after to that particular moment in time. Um, so it could start off being really light, showing positivity, showing being content, moving on to darkness where it maybe shows that it's quite something quite ominous or a mysterious um, aspect is going to happen towards the end or it could shift either way. So I'd like you to read the paragraph on the right hand side of the slide, read it through with me and then what we're going to do is we're going to discuss how it moves and shifts from one to the other. So like a majestic ruler, the sun rises proudly over the serene fields blanketing the dormant darkness with a spectrum of light and life, shifting shards of sun pirouette across the grasslands, offspring of a distant star watching over paternally. But the darkness lurks in the shadows beneath the eternal sky. A small barn stands stagnant, a distant sentinel from an ancient past. Silhouettes of the barn spire elongate dominantly over the field, making its presence known. The stark stench of dry hair and drowsiness permeates the air as the day yawns lethargically in this haven of harmony. So we can see how we've moved from this really um, bright overview, the majestic ruler of the sun, so it almost shows this positivity. And then we've got that one um, sentence paragraph in the middle and that really does give us that clear link that something is going to change and then as we move through we can see how we've got silhouettes how there's a stench we can see how there's drowsiness and this, it's, uh, we've got this lethargy in there so this exhaustion so we can see how it clearly moves from being really positive and light to being um, really quite mysterious and dark Okay, so what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to write two to three paragraphs describing the image on this particular side, and I'd like you to use an extended metaphor. Now we have got war or light and dark or tree or ocean or books. However, um, remember light and dark is your most simplest one. Um, remember the um, example that's on there that was linked to war, so you can use something very similar to that. But look at this particular image, so you can see how it's in like um, a shopping um, kind of cafe. Um, environment we can see it's really busy it's quite cluttered so i want you to use first person so remember putting yourself into that position and i want you to use a flashback on a past trauma okay um on the following slide you've got some um ideas and some tips some sentences some vocabulary that you can use and add those into your writing I'd like you to, um, if you need to have some planning time give yourself five minutes and then give yourself ten minutes for writing okay off you go Okay, well done, Year 7. So, um, like in other um, activities that we've done, we're just going to reflect on what we've done today. Um, and I want you to um, rag rate yourself, so whether or not you're red, you're amber, or you're green. Remember, if you're red, that might be something that you need to have a little bit more support in when we return to school. If you're amber, it shows that you're starting to become confident. But again, if you need to have some support, that's something that you need to mention when you go back to school. And if you're green, that means that you're super confident and you felt it quite easy to do that. Um, however, have you met the criteria that's here? So, um, we've got four clear um skills that we want you to um, identify. So for example, I wrote two or more paragraphs. I produced a clear extended metaphor. Um, I've used the metaphor template for additional vocabulary and I used first person successfully. So complete the grid, please. Anything that you haven't used, just remind um, yourself of those so we can use those in our next activity. Off you go.